Um, yeah, USC specifically discussed asset visibility and, and vulnerability last time. Uh, and so you reached out to me to discuss uh, what you call behavior-based security as an extension topic. So I'll let you explain it in full, but but based on my limited knowledge, uh, I get the sense that we're talking about the concept of in introducing security into the development pipeline in a way that keeps both the finished product and the work environment safe from attacks and breaches, but also not sacrificing the flow that developers need to be in to progress their work and finish tasks on deadline. So can you talk about a little more about this, this concept of behavior-based security and specifically talk about what's considered normal developer behavior and, and how we determine that idea of normal? Yeah, so so the, the way that we're looking at essentially security in general and behavior-based security is that you have three aspects that you need to protect and okay. uh, you need to protect the developer. It can be the developer that uses your corporate resources or also the developer account like GitHub. You can use your account right. in the corporate or outside of the corporate. Um, so that you need to protect the developer. You need to protect the source code, which is whatever your source code management as GitHub, Azure DevOps, Git, uh, GitLab, okay. Bitbucket. Um, and, and the last thing that you need to protect is also the product itself as it's being developed. Mm -hmm. The approaches to protect each one of them are completely different mm -hmm. with one thing that is common. There is something that needs to come up with a history of behavior. I'll give you a couple of examples. Please. Um, a developer um, account can be compromised. Right. Um, it, it's not uncommon. And as a matter of fact, uh, I don't know if you saw there is uh, on on uh, September of last year, mm -hmm. GitHub uh, published a, a an alert that warned uh, developers essentially uh, about account takeovers with with phishing attacks. Right. Um, not only that, developer tokens are sometimes uh, tend to find themselves in uh, uh, in source code repos like as as a token to authenticate mm -hmm. um, so so it's not uncommon to see developer account takeovers um and the way to protect developer account takeover is essentially by looking at the historical behavior of each developer mm -hmm. and by saying historical behavior it can be based on whatever on the audit trail that you have on commits on pull requests so the more data you have, the, the easier it is to make a decision. Okay. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, maybe a developer that clones, um, you know, 30 repos, sorry, maybe three repos in a sprint, um, maybe like three services that the developer works on um, is okay. But then the same developer now clones 30 repos mm -hmm. uh, in an hour. It it smells like source code exfiltration, right? Yeah. It smells mm -hmm. like someone tries to steal the code. Um, so so this is an example of uh, identifying an abnormal behavior for the developer. If you look at the flip side, a build agent can definitely clone thirty repos in an hour mm -hmm. because that's part of the same profile. So it's not about uh, if you're doing too many clones; it's about the profile that you build for that identity. Mm -hmm. Then. Um, another example for um, uh, for abnormal behavior is, uh, let's say a developer writes code, right? Let's say someone uh, committed a piece of code that seems to be malicious, maybe introduce a backdoor, either maliciously or inadvertently. Yep. Okay? Um, and, um, and, and in many cases, um, you know, the way that you write code is pretty much the same. Of course, you have your metadata patterns like days and hours of weeks uh, mm -hmm. where you commit code. But um, for example, the way that you, maybe your commit message may not be the same or the code that you just wrote may not be the same okay. as you typically write code. Um, and therefore, um, think about it like a signature that you put on a paper. Mm -hmm. The capability to identify whether it's the right signature for the developer is very important to protect both the developer the source code and your product, mm -hmm. right? Because this is like that. By the way, that also happened with the PHP hack when someone planted a backdoor mm -hmm. into the source code of PHP, and it passed the pull request. So okay. it was a moment before the code was merged. Uh, someone, someone just caught it. Uh, yeah, so that's yeah. just an example of, of a use case. Um, another example: protecting your source code. Mm -hmm. Behavior based. Um, think about most of the breaches that you saw recently, even with source code exfiltration. I mean, could you reduce that risk if you just minimize the permissions to least privilege? Mm -hmm. I mean, 
it's very common to have improper access management to source code. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, again, and, the, and, again, the sort of speed before safety kind of thing. It's what? Again, the sort of speed before safety kind of thing. It's just yes. like, leave it open. We can just grab it whenever we want it kind of thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the flip side, if you could find uh, which permissions are being used and based mm -hmm. on that could reduce that to list privilege, you would you would reduce the risk and the, and the blast radius of a potential attack. Mm -hmm. Plus, not all permissions are uh, equal, meaning you may have the ability to write code to a specific repo, mm -hmm. but you will not be able to write code to the specific branch that is being deployed to production. So okay. do you have a risk? Maybe you don't have risk. So, so yep. that context with the historical behavior is really important to avoid false positives and annoying developers. Right, um, right. As a matter of fact, you probably want to have a mechanism to re-grant permissions whenever the whenever developers need those permissions back. Mm -hmm. So think about a use case where instead of developing developers asking a permission every whatever every time they need access to a, to a repo, you can say if um, a developer asks a permission to a repo where he or she had that permission in the last ninety days, automatically re-grant it. Right. right. Okay. Okay. You can come up with a logic mm -hmm. that makes things simpler, behavior based. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. And right. and 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 the things that are are coming through that are anomalous is just because. So is it is it kind of like you know if you you know an a, an unusually large uh, you know amount of money is charged to your credit card from you know Great Britain and your credit card says, did you mean to spend a hundred pounds in, uh, on, a, on a hardcover book? And I'm like, yes, I have weird taste. I'm sorry. Yes, please release it. You know, is, is it kind of like that where it's 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 detecting like weird things that it, it has enough of a sense of like the flow of the developer that it can tell when uh, it, it, the developer is not doing what it's expecting it to do? Exactly. Um, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, that's pretty much how it works in our case, uh, but I'm, I'm a big fan of chat ops. Okay. And, uh, and and the thing is that developers don't like to be shamed and of you course, don't want yeah. to put it all over, right? And uh, and and the best way to to identify something like that, if it's, you know, if it's an account takeover, you probably want to notify the developer and mm -hmm. ask, you know, hey, Chris, did you just push that piece of code? Mm -hmm. And it's very simple. If it's a yes, all you need to do is to teach the model that it's okay. Yeah. And if it's a no, you need to kick off an incident. That's it. So okay. It's very clear what you need to do with the, what you need to do with that message. Have you seen Workbytes, the new security awareness training series from InfoSec? Our team produced this series with three E's in mind, making security awareness training entertaining, engaging, and educational. Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free to learn more about this hilarious office comedy. And hey, let us know what you think about it.